In this video, we're going to talk about the properties of molecular compounds, or in other words, compounds that are composed of molecules. Here's the properties we're going to look at in this video. First of all, these compounds are composed of molecules. They're usually gases or liquids at room temperature. Uh, these compounds have a low melting and boiling point. And then finally, they don't really conduct heat or electricity. All right, let's look at the first one here. These compounds are composed of molecules. And here's a water molecule. And inside a glass of water, there would be billions and billions of these things. Now these billions and billions of molecules are going to be attracted to each other. In other words, they're going to kind of stick together. And if we look at just one of these molecules, uh, what's happening here is that we have atoms that are sharing electrons, and they're covalently bonded to each other. So in this water molecule, we have an oxygen atom that's bonded to two hydrogen atoms in a covalent bond. For more information on covalent bonding, you can watch the video called Covalent Bonding. Most of the atoms in the universe are not going to be found by themselves. They will naturally be found as molecules. And sometimes an atom will bind to another atom that is identical to itself. Kind of like H2. This is a molecule that's composed of two hydrogen atoms that are covalently bonded together. The word diatomic means two atoms. Uh, the root here, di, means two, and then atomic means atoms. And there's actually seven diatomic elements that in their pure natural form as they're found in the universe, they're actually found in pairs bonded just like H2 is. The other ones are over here on the left side of the periodic table. And it's actually in this L shape here, starting with nitrogen down to iodine. And these ones highlighted in blue, including hydrogen, are the diatomic elements. Okay, let's move to the next property here. Molecular compounds are mostly going to be found as gases or liquids at room temperature. So here's a glass of water with all its molecules there, and these molecules are going to be attracted to each other. Now the attraction is not very strong, and so they're kind of loosely held together. The molecules are kind of free to move and slide around past each other, which makes a liquid a liquid, its ability to flow. This is different from an ionic compound, because in an ionic compound, we have something that's going to remain solid, and you'd have to get it really hot before it would melt. In this ionic compound here, the different ions are in fixed location. They, they can't really move around at all, and so we're going to have a solid. Now, we could get this liquid water to turn into a gas by heating it. And the difference between a liquid and a gas is the amount of motion we have within the particles. If the particles are moving faster, then they have the ability to kind of break away from each other, and the attraction's not going to hold on as well. So as we heat this up, we will be able to get these molecules to fly away and become a gas. Now, notice here, as this molecule flew away from the rest of the molecules, the molecule is still intact. It didn't break apart itself. And so the covalent bonds here uh, that are linking the different atoms together, they are incredibly strong. And actually, covalent bonds are even stronger than ionic bonds. So although we can heat up this substance so that it turns into a gas, we don't break the covalent bonds. Now this brings us to the fact that molecular compounds have low melting and boiling points. And so we don't have to get these things very hot to turn them into a liquid or gas. Remember that boiling and melting, they don't mean we're breaking the covalent bonds. We're just making the molecules separate from each other. Okay, final property here. Molecular compounds don't usually conduct heat or electricity very well. Electricity can be defined as moving electrons. And for a substance to be conductive, it must have some free electrons, like in a metallic compound or have some mobile charges like in a dissolved ionic compound. So here's an example of an ionic compound that's been dissolved. And we actually have the ions that have separated from each other. They've dissociated, in other words, split apart. And this gives the ability for an electron to kind of bounce across these ions, almost like it's traveling across uh, stepping stones to work its way from one end to the other. So with electricity, we'd actually have two electrodes that would be stuck into this solution. And the electrons would be flowing from one electrode to the other electrode. Again, they use the charges kind of as a stepping stone to work their way from one end to the other. If, if we had a bunch of molecules in solution, so here's methane, what it might look like, there are no charges. And so if we put some electrodes uh, right into this methane here, 
and we wanted our electrons to flow through from one end to the other, they wouldn't be able to because there's no charges to bounce across. There's no stepping stone. And those are the properties of molecular compounds.